My name is Avi McGrady, and this talk is about how to teach kids cybersecurity first principles in kindergarten through 12th grade, and why schools everywhere need to start implementing this. I just graduated from New Vista High School in Boulder, Colorado, and will be attending Rensselaer Polytechnic this fall. I became interested in cybersecurity when I was around eight years old and my Roblox account was hacked. I lost everything in my account, but it inspired me to learn more about how things like this could happen so I could prevent it in the future and teach my friends too. I wanted to dig into this in school, but there were no classes that I could take. I soon realized that an absence of cybersecurity curriculum is a problem almost everywhere. And even though there are a ton of resources available to help school boards and boards of education develop one, I set out to help districts like mine figure out what they needed to do next. In addition to this, I also challenged my school board of my district to make this happen. The QR code here links to the public comment I gave at a board meeting last May. So schools are where we learn our most fundamental things to function everyday life. So with cybersecurity, a more common requirement for adulting and educational technology or ed tech more widespread, it makes sense to begin teaching it now and develop good habits early. Students, teachers, and admin staff should all be included since they are all potential targets. It's also a problem that schools are frequent targets for cyber attacks because in this country, schools are often under-resourced for cyber defense, among other things. Modeling good practices also helps employ a good way of teaching them and helps build teamwork. So we have a lot of very big problems to address here. These include scams and phishing, in particular those that harm the youngest and oldest people, Bullying and trolling is also a problem everywhere, and the internet makes it even more challenging to address, especially with new generative AI tools that make it easy to, for example, publish a non-consensual fake nude image of a classmate, harass them and their friends online, or troll them into doing bad things. Older kids need to learn about malware, how it can be embedded in pirated software and shared on Discord or other online chats. And as they achieve more financial freedom, kids need to know how to protect their payment cards and financial information and need to know what to do if that info gets compromised. We can't just lay down a set of rules and expect kids to follow them. After all, being a kid myself, I don't want to follow rules unless I know exactly what they're for. They need buy-in about why we need these things. We should teach them about how attackers work and what negative consequences of getting hacked costs a victim. Everybody here knows Bo Woods, probably, who is a founder of this village. I interviewed Bo for my culminating project for my high school graduation requirement. He made some very good points. He advocates for a more than surface level instruction in cybersecurity. And we can't just tell people to look for the padlock in the browser address bar, what, but what the padlock means and why it's even there. Bo supports the idea of a broad based educational curriculum around cybersecurity and for it to apply in every grade. There are cybersecurity lessons for every classroom and every subject. He also said that some parts of the curriculum should be introduced at an early age, then revisited in later grades with more detail. So you all probably know Josh too. Josh is a founder of the I Am The Cavalry Project and helps organize the annual Hackers on the Hill gathering at the Capitol in Washington, D.C. every year. I interviewed Bo and he made some valuable observations. Cybersecurity, it's on every part of an organization or school, so everyone should be involved in cybersecurity training, not just the teachers and staff, but also, or I'm sorry, not just the IT folks, but including the teachers and staff. 
He also said that there should be more cybersecurity information available to more people, including people who don't have a career interest in doing cybersecurity work or going into a technology field. Everyone must be included. Additionally, he touched on the importance of teaching strong cyber ethics to ensure our next generations of hackers don't walk down the wrong path into criminal activity. So this leads to the question of what's missing from the curriculum we currently have? The answer is a lot. We don't have basic online privacy or safety instruction. We don't get taught about password managers or why we might need them. We don't learn about ethical behavior online and how others might be harmed by your actions by, for example, posting something harmful to social media. We don't get taught about about why pirating software is bad and why we shouldn't just run any old program someone posts online. And most importantly, we aren't getting instruction in online critical thinking skills and countering online misinformation and disinformation. In brief, most of what we should be teaching kids is not being taught in a systematic, widespread way. To give more structure to what I've been talking about, I developed a bare bones framework curriculum. We start with the youngest kids. Kindergarten through fifth graders need some basic instruction into what is privacy and why it's dangerous to share information about yourself online. These kids also need to internalize an important concept. When it seems too good to be true, it usually is, which can apply to lessons in phishing and malware avoidance. Through middle school, we begin to introduce harm reduction strategies for cyberbullying. I encourage schools to introduce restorative justice principles to help address this. And we need to address interacting safely with people you only know online and have never met in person. Finally, as kids become more tech proficient, we begin to introduce concepts like what is executable code and what are the possible consequences of running it when you don't know what it will do, as well as tackling phishing, online fraud, scams, and password management. The youngest kids obviously need topics that are tailored to them. The term of art in education is developmentally appropriate because we can't burden them with all the heaviest stuff we as adults deal with, but we can teach these fundamentals because we have no choice. Some kids are already using their parents' devices before they start school. So we explain it to them in the same way we teach them to cross the street with a lot of handholding and gentle guidance. It's also a bit like teaching stranger danger. You wouldn't walk away with a person you don't know, so don't tell that person your name where you go to school or live. Alongside the youngest kids, it bears repeating important lessons about deception through middle school. It is not a tool to destroy trust, but to build resilience. The euphemism we use here is if it, if it seems, or if it is too good to be true, then it probably is. It's the same lesson we teach about stranger danger, but with a more concrete example. This lesson can be applied broadly to topics like phishing, downloading trojanized pirated games, or cheat apps. It can be simplistic for the younger kids, but by middle school, we can introduce the concept of people intentionally lying to you and able to, for you to do something you wouldn't normally do. This is an important critical thinking skill that will support people all their lives. Ask anyone who has been a middle school student in recent years. It's the worst time pretty much for everyone. Kids are learning to stretch themselves and sometimes that extends into some pretty negative places. Bullying and teasing gets more common and more real. And as self-awareness grows, kids feel that a lot more strongly. 
encouraging kids to be strong and self-sufficient is great, but their peers mean more to them at this age. So in this case, we adults should be supporting them as much as we can with a restorative justice framing to guide kids into empathy rather than driving them apart. New technologies like generative AI are already making things worse for kids at this age, so some guardrails about AI are called for. One thing that we never really talk about is how you socialize safely over the internet. Forget curriculum, it's very rare that even parents talk with their kids about how to interact with others online. It's a lot more common that it just happens because kids are curious and talk to their friends who invite them into social spaces. The social spaces kids visit have a strong impact on impressionable minds. Studies have shown that, for example, white supremacists sometimes target spaces for kids specifically for this reason. This is also the time to talk about how not to overshare and don't put anything online out of anger. Don't post something that you wouldn't want projected on the screen during a school assembly in the auditorium. So what is executable code? If your child asks you right now, do you know how to answer? Well, probably, because it's DEF CON, but could you help them understand the difference between double-clicking a document and double-clicking an application? To someone who has never been explicitly told these things, it can be a shock to discover that things you can just click can do harm. So. For kids in middle school and older, we need to go over what are executables, how they can appear in a myriad of ways in Windows, Mac, and Linux environments, and how to safely assess them. Teach your kids to use VirusTotal, too. It's free and can totally save your bacon. So once kids reach high school, they will likely be playing a lot of games online, probably using different devices like consoles, computers, and mobile devices. And they will also be doing a lot of classwork, homework, and projects with others on various ed tech platforms like Google Classroom or Schoology. This is the right time to instill them a habit of using a password manager, generating different passwords for everything they use, and as they get older, adopting MFA. We can also never get enough phishing training, so let's get more of that here too. And finally, it's important to give kids direction on what to do if they make a mistake and have a password stolen or get scammed. As an adult, be gentle, lead with empathy and kindness, and help them understand that it isn't their fault they were misled. Don't give kids a reason not to come to you in the future if something bad happens. For kids who are interested in cybersecurity, they have a lot of options available to them, but not particularly support for them in their district. I want to highlight a few of these programs that work well, in my opinion, as someone who has done a bit of all of these things. Schools can also sponsor or run some of these programs that introduce various cybersecurity concepts, including red team work, defensive security, and getting experience in industry with internships or volunteer work. Could you imagine the good it would do for a whole high school cybersecurity club to go out into the community to do volunteer work, helping nonprofits, retirement homes, or charities to defend themselves or pass along the knowledge they've gained? Some of these kinds of programs can be done just by kids but some of them need teachers to sponsor them. So find your nerdiest computer teacher and ask them for help. In most US states, new curriculum gets adopted by a state board of education and then passed down to school districts to implement.
schools, school districts, and state boards of ed have a lot of resources available to them to give them a push towards developing curriculum, including model curriculum and guidelines for a specific cybersecurity subject matter. The U.S. federal government has several agencies, including CISA, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, the Department of Education, and various branches of the U.S. military all provide resources and sometimes sponsor events and competitions designed to encourage kids to find a career path in cybersecurity. Career and guidance counselors can also help students find local internships or apprentice programs that they can apply for. And don't forget, you can contact the members of your state board of education and tell, you, and tell them why you think this is important and advocate to them about adopting a cybersecurity curriculum at all grade levels. Of course, all of these gaps in our educational curriculum could be filled if we had lawmakers who support the idea of teaching cybersecurity and pass bills to pay for new and continuing training and competition events. It goes without saying that it would be a lot easier to accomplish these things if we didn't have to explain the most basic cybersecurity principles to lawmakers who don't really understand the problem space. All of this to say is that it would benefit us all to elect a few more hackers and hacker-friendly politicians to Congress, state houses, and state school boards. This is another supporting reason for why we need more widespread education. If we begin teaching the masses on cybersecurity principles, our future lawmakers will have a great grasp on the topics we need them to understand. This talk serves as a call to action for everyone's involvement. Cybersecurity public education is in dire need of attention and funding, and as hackers, we understand the gravity of this situation. To make a difference, consider writing letters to your legislators and state boards of ed advocating for cybersecurity education in schools, raising awareness among your family and friends is also equally important. Foster an environment where everyone is part of the fight, all ages and professions. So to wrap it up, let me summarize what schools, lawmakers, kids, teachers, administrators, counselors, and parents need to know. We build a more resilient society by teaching all kids at all grade levels principles of cybersecurity. We currently have a desperate need for more people who can work in this field and developing a larger workforce of cybersecurity professionals begins with teaching all kids the basics. Schools remain targets for ransomware and other cybercrime in a cyber smart administration and staff can help protect a school or district better than a small number of IT staff who are already overtaxed. We will never be able to put a dent in our cybersecurity problem until we dig our way out of the hole of cyber ignorance we live in. It's time to put an end to the vicious cycle that creates an ever larger pool of cybercrime victims. I'm extending a special thanks to everyone who has supported me on this journey, and in specific, Andrew Brandt for the relentless mentorship and guidance. Your amazing help with this project and others has gotten me to the point of where I am today. I could not have done it without you. Thanks so much for coming to my talk. Any questions? Um, I'm not really sure specifically. I think that there are districts that are going in the right direction, like more progressive districts and districts that begin to teach cyber citizenship, I know are a thing already, but um, I don't think there's any districts that teach this at a widespread level quite yet. 
um, but there definitely are districts. I think Douglas County and a county nearby where I live, it's in Colorado, I think they have a um, pretty strong cyber program that has community outreach, things like that. That's a really great step to the beginning of what I think a good cybersecurity future would look like. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Hmm? Can you can you repeat that real quick? Pittsburgh Public School District in Pennsylvania, they have one teacher uh, that has been championing this, mm -hmm. but he's a cybersecurity professional that well, is a cybersecurity professional. He's a teacher first, and so he is working on putting this out to the entire the entire cyber program for high school. He's trying to push it down, uh, and so it's one of those things where. We work with a bunch of cybersecurity in general, my my group. And so you know, he's been doing a great job a lot of getting you know kids trained into it um, and doing the different areas. Great. That's amazing. That's great to hear. Uh, we need more people like that for sure. Yeah. I'm kind of hear like uh, administrators saying we don't have time, we don't have funding, we don't have anything. But you can kind of hear in your head what those are. So I what are some of the low level vectors that you can kind of get in to, you know, is it an insert when a kid gets a laptop or a, whatever they're using for their home, or is it reaching out to those types of professionals that, that are trying to amplify their workplaces and spread that out? Do you see any kind of perspectives as we kind of get in there and work with them? Yeah, so districts who say like, we don't have time or resources to do this, it can be as simple as giving a very small lesson to kids, even when they get their school assigned laptops, I think that's an amazing first step. Because giving them a piece of technology and not telling them how to be safe on it is a recipe for a disaster, as we've seen. Um, and I think that a really great first step is just putting a little informational thing that they go over 10 minutes, whatever, and then done. But um, as this becomes a larger problem, as we'll see in the coming years, if we don't take action, I think school administrators and staff will start taking this a little bit more seriously, as well as school boards. Um, and this is kind of why I'm making this presentation, is because we need to get a jump on it before it gets out of hand. Um, and we start seeing future generations be cyber illiterate. Yeah, I can add on that. I was going to say, I come from a more rural area, and I've seen a lot of resources that are limited in schools. And so I've seen a lot of work that the schools in our area is falling to the librarians. Because we don't have to do those specialized. So a lot of the technology area is falling in those places. Um, I do a lot of outreach, so I know it's very helpful. I go to schools, and I meet with the librarians. Right. Um, but again, it doesn't know they exist. Um, so if you have school in your area, you have your own kids that you're worried about, well, what's their school on the scene? But oftentimes the link to the librarian is not going to be already in the state. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's a great point. So, uh, yeah, I think we have to do a cutoff here, unfortunately. So, yeah, thank you so much.